Cain took hold on Esau's hill. And it says, after that came his brother out. Now you notice it did not describe Jacob. Why? Because Jacob looked like everyone else. But it shows something distinct again. That Jacob took hold of Esau's heel. So this was prophetic according to this particular event. You would have to go to Second Ezra, the sixth chapter in the Apocrypha, eight and nine, to understand what this struggle was about. Why did Jacob take hold of Esau's heel? Read Second Ezra six the 8th verse and the ninth verse. 2nd Ezra. And chapter. then and then we going back, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Go ahead. 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 8. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. What we read in Genesis 25, why did he grab Esau's hill? Free for Esau is the end of the world. Because the head is the top and the feet is the end. So he grabbed his heel to show you that Esau is the end of the world. What is this showing? That the Edomites would be ruling at the end of the world. Now, that identifies who Esau is in the earth. Because Esau would have the power to rule the earth at the very end. Esau is the end of the world, and what comes after Esau? And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Then Christ brings the kingdom for Israel, and Jacob gets the promises, proving to you that Esau would be ruling right before the coming of Christ. And who can get around that? There's no way around that. If you understand prophecy, you know who Esau is in the earth. Esau is the end of the world. So if you want to find out who is Esau, look who's ruling at the end of the world. Because we know Jacob is coming. Once Christ comes, he's bringing Jacob's kingdom. And that will be without separation. No sooner as Esau fall, Jacob will receive the promises. It's that simple. Now that's if you believe the Bible. Now if... The European powers that are ruling the earth are not Esau. Where is he? Where is Esau? Because there's no place in the Bible that says Japheth is going to take God's people in the cargo slave ships. All right? There's no place in the Bible that says Ham and the other nations are going to be ruling over Israel in the last days. Okay? Now, in Psalms 83, it identifies all the nations who would be over Israel. Because don't forget, there's a prophecy of all the nations together at the very end fighting against Jacob. And we're going to go into that. But who's at the helm of this fight against Jacob? Esau is. That's why we're dubbing this and naming this the war. And we're going to handle this. We're going to take our time with it and break down every piece of this prophecy leading up into this war with Iran. We're going to try to make sure not one stone be uncovered <clears throat> with this lesson. Let's show you some attributes of Jacob and Esau. And I'm going through a lot of these that you've seen before because they erased it and canceled us off of Justin TV once we broke it down. If we break down every part of it, then they can't escape the powers of this earth cannot escape and cannot escape being identified as the nemesis of God's people. Finish reading in Genesis 25. Genesis chapter 25, verse 26. And after that came up, came his brother out. Go ahead. And his hand took hold on Esau's hill. And his name was called Jacob. And his name was called Jacob, which means Yahweh. <coughs> Now, the Most High called him Yaiqua because he would need to be Yaiqua, a supplanter, to actually get the promises that was told to Rebekah. He would need to supplant his brother. You notice after he received the blessings and he received the birthright, 
the Most High changed his name. But religion and Christianity would want to always remember Jacob as the supplanter. He had to become the supplanter. He had to be born the supplanter because he came out second. In order for him to fulfill the prophecy of the second being the firstborn, he would need to supplant his brother Esau. It was prophetic before they were born. How do you know that? Hold that and go to Romans 9 and 11. Romans chapter 9 verse 11. Romans 9 and 11, read it. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. So you can't say it's anything Jacob or Esau did because, number one, the promises was given to Rebecca. She was, she was told what was going to happen with the two children when they were in the womb, right, before they were born. Read that again. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. So before they did any good or evil, read, that the purpose of the Most High, according to election, might stand. It was the purpose of the Most High, read, not of works, not of works, but of him that calleth. But it was the Most High that calleth, read, it was said unto her, it was said unto Rebekah before the children was born, before they did anything, read, the elder shall serve the younger. It was told to this woman, that the elder child would serve the younger child. That didn't happen yet in the earth. But it will happen according to prophecy. Read. As it is written. As it is what? As it is written. As it is written. You cannot take the, <laughs> the, the ink off of these pages. As it is written what? Jacob have I loved. Jacob did the most high love because he understood that his son would come through Jacob from the beginning. He knew that his son would not come from Esau or Ishmael or any other nation. He knew that the Savior was coming through Jacob. Jacob have I loved. Read. But Esau have I hated. Why did he hate Esau? He hated Esau because Esau sought to go after God's people. And I'm going to prove that. He also hated Esau because of Esau's attributes to sin against the law purposely and to go against the will of the Most High. Now, you do have Edomites who don't follow that will like Cornelius and who would follow truthfully in spirit and in truth. And then you have the rest. Go back to Genesis 25. Genesis chapter 25. 25 verse 27 go ahead and the boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter he was a what and Esau was a cunning hunter here is the attributes of the two separate nations Esau became a cunning hunter that's one attribute that you know the powers that be today the Caucasoid or the European powers have okay they can hunt they will go in, they go into a middle of a, of a park someplace or go into a middle of a farm or some, some type of uh, wooded area. Who would know to make something to call ducks that sounds just like a duck? Who would do that? Or throw deer pee on them, a female deer pee so a male buck can come near you. Who would do that? That's not a normal thing that people say, you know what, I'm going to take some deer pee and throw over me so that I can get, get a male buck to come near me to shoot. Also, their weaponry is superior above all nations. That's the reason why they're ruling, because that was their blessing. Their blessing is that they would live through blood and live through the sword. I'm going to prove that. If it wasn't for their weaponry, the other, the other nations would have been took them down with no problem. Okay? Because they're not physically stronger than everyone else. They don't outnumber everyone else. They're the smallest amongst all the nations. But they have superior weaponry. He was a cunning what? Cunning hunter. A cunning hunter. See, these are attributes that are actually uh, are handed down to the children. Read. A man of the field. A man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Listen. Jacob chilled at home. 
He wasn't all out there playing and jumping out of trees and shooting stuff and all. He, he was